Hello friends, today we shall discuss high performance bituminous mixes for high volume roads as suggested in IRC SP 139-2023. Laboratory and field studies conducted during the past two decades on selection of binders and mixes for higher fatigue and rutting performance has resulted in development of high performance asphalt mixes. High performance mixes typically are those which have high stiffness that is modulus value and can produce better performance in rutting and fatigue as compared with conventional mix. High modulus or high ma, high modulus asphalt mix or high ma can also be referred to as high performance bitmus mixes or hyper bitmus mixes. These were adopted initially in France but now popular in other countries also. And now India has also developed guidelines for these mixes based on international practices and some field studies conducted on national highways in India. The bitumen used for hyper bitumen mixes shall be hard grade bitumen which is stiffer than VG40 and it can be obtained either by modification of neat binder or can be produced in the refinery by propane de-asphalting method. PDA method. VG30 or VG40 can also be made HIMA through modification and this modification can be either using single or more than one modifier. These modifiers can be blended in appropriate doses with VG40 or VG30 grade bitumen. In fact, any binder which meets the requirement given here can be used for high performance bitumen mix. So these are the physical properties of high performance binder. Penetration value at 25 degree centigrade should be in the range of 15 to 25. Softening point 55 to 71 degree centigrade. Dynamic viscosity at 60 degree centigrade should be more than 550 Pascal second. And after RTFO that is short term aging, the change in the weight of the material should not be more than 0.5%. The softening point after hardening minimum 2 degree higher than original binder but increase in softening point after short term aging should be less than or equal to 8. Kinematic viscosity is considered for construction workability and it should be more than 600 millimeter square per second or you can say 600 centi stock. When high performance binder is prepared using modifier then some additional requirements as suggested here in this table are to be met and these are more or less same requirement as given in IS 15462 for modified binders. Stabil so storage stability should be less than or equal to 3 that is the separation difference in the softening point between the top and bottom of the tube. The super paved rutting parameter of original binder that is G star by sine delta should be minimum 1 kPa with 25 millimeter plate 1 millimeter gap and the temperature, the failure temperature should be more than or equal to 76 degrees centigrade. And similarly, after RTFO, this failure temperature should be more than or equal to 76 degrees centigrade. Now, here the requirement is that 3 star by sine delta should be minimum 2.2 kPa. MSCR, multiple stress creep recovery test should also be conducted and the rutting parameter, which is basically non-recoverable creep compliance, JNR, at 3.2 kilopascal should be less than or equal to 0 0.25. So requirement of coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and filler is same as given in MORTH specification for dense bitumen macadam. Coarse aggregate should be crushed rock or crushed gravel retained on 2.36 mm sieve. It should be clean, hard, durable and of cubical shape, free from dust and of low porosity. And the physical requirement which are suggested for aggregate, coarse aggregate is like this that cleanliness is judged by grain size distribution, passing 75 microns should be less than 5%, then particle shape, strength, durability, water absorption, stripping and water sensitivity. All these requirements must be satisfied by coarse aggregate as in case of DBM. Fine aggregate and filler will also be judged as we generally do for DBM that this should be crushed or naturally occurring mineral materials passing 2.36 millimeter 
and retained on 75 mm sieve. Sand equivalent value should be 50 or more. PIE of fraction passing 0.425 mm should be less than 4. No natural sand in the binder course, not more than 50% sand in the base course. That is the requirement in DBM and same requirement should be met in high performance mix also. Filler, filler can be of rock dust or lime or cement meeting the sieve size analysis as given here. It should pass 600 micron 100%, passing 300 micron 95 to 100%, passing 75 micron should be 85 to 100. When coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and filler are mixed together, the final grading for high performance mix should meet one of these requirements. Now, this grading hyper 1 is specified for a thickness of 50 to 75 millimeter and this is the grading for 50 millimeter thickness. Now, this grading is exactly same as in case of DBM, whereas this grading has been taken from a French code for hyper 2. Minimum binder content for 3% air wired is 4.9% in case of 26.5 mm nominal size of aggregate and 5% for 19 mm size of aggregate. Now here should be noted that these percentages are by weight of aggregate. Generally we specify these percentages by weight of mix but here in this table these are by weight of aggregate and therefore when we say 5% by weight of aggregate it will be around 4.75 by weight of the mix and this will be around 4.67 percent by weight of the mix. Mix design procedure is same as for any other bitmus layer that is Marshall method of mix design is to be used as given in MS2. Here design parameters are slightly different for from those given in MORTH for DBM or BC mixes. In general, Hyper mixes should be designed as bitumen rich mix and bitumen content is selected corresponding to 3% air wires. Other parameters like stability at 60 degrees centigrade should be 15 kN minimum, VMA 13%, VFB is 70 to 80% because it is bitumen rich layer and therefore this range has been slightly increased and Marshall flow value is 1.5 to 3 mm. IRC suggests that high performance bitmus mixes are to be designed using performance based approach. That means these mixes should satisfy performance requirement of workability, stiffness which is measured in terms of resin modulus, rutting resistance, fatigue performance and moisture damage resistance. Now here this workability is measured using gyratory compactor. And this should be less than or equal to 6% at 45 gyrations. Stiffness is measured in terms of resident modulus at 35 degrees centigrade. And this test is done as per ASTM D4123. And its value should be more than or equal to 3500 MPa for modified binders and more than 4000 MPa for unmodified binders. And you can watch my video on determination of resin modulus for further details on this test. Rutting is done on small devices at 60 degrees centigrade using a wheel tracker as per European standard and its value should be less than or equal to 6 millimeter after 30,000 cycles. Fatigue is estimated using ITFT at 25 degrees centigrade and fatigue life of 10,000 cycle must be obtained initial strain of 100 micron. And TSR is measured by ITS and tensile strength ratio. Here also you can watch my video on ITS and TSR and its value should be more than or equal to 80%. Now this is a new test added in this specification. Workability should be less than or equal to 6%. Now this workability is determined by compacting the mix using gyratory compactor at a design binder content. So first step is to prepare the design binder content that is OBC at 3% air wires. Then prepare a specimen 150 mm diameter bitmus mix sample with selected aggregate gradation and design bitmus content in gyratory compactor by applying 45 gyrations. And at this gyration, the air wires in the mixture should be less than or equal to 6%. That is the test for workability. 
And as I told you earlier, Marshall method of mix design is used to prepare the job mix formula. And here, because you are using modified binder, mixing and compaction temperature should be estimated as per MS2 method. And this MS2 series basically suggests two procedures. One is DSR phase angle procedure, another is DSR steady state flow procedure. And I have uploaded one video on this, how to determine mixing and compaction temperature for modified binders. You can watch that video for details of these two procedures. In brief, DSR phase angle procedure requires a shear frequency sweep from 1 to 100 radian per second at a minimum three temperatures and then develop a master curve at 80 degree centigrade. Now from this master curve, you determine the frequency where the phase angle becomes 86 degree and use this frequency to determine mixing temperature using this equation. Mixing temperature in degree Fahrenheit is 325 omega power 0 minus 0 0.0135. Omega is the frequency corresponding to 86 degree phase angle. Now in IRC, SP-139, this equation is slightly changed and the equation which is suggested in IRC code is 310 omega power minus 0 0.01. But there will not be much difference between these two equations because these are in degree Fahrenheit and when you convert into degree centigrade, the difference will be very small, maybe of the order of 1 or 2 degree centigrade only. The compaction temperature is estimated using this equation 300 into omega power minus 0 0.01. Now this is also in degree Fahrenheit. So this is one method of finding mixing and compaction temperature for modified binders. The second method is DSR steady state flow procedure. And in this procedure, a shear stress sweep from 50 to 1000 pascals is carried out at minimum three test temperature to determine the steady state viscosity. So what we do? High shear stress sweep is conducted from 50 to 1000 Pascal and five data points are selected as per log decade means log of 1000 minus log of 50 divided by 5. So that is the shear stress interval and at each shear stress we take total of eight data points. Multiple temperature 88 degree centigrade to 112 degree centigrade at least three temperatures and parallel plate system with 25 millimeter plate, 0.5 millimeter gap, and you find out the viscosity, viscosity versus temperature graph. And then this relationship is used to determine the mixing temperature at a viscosity of 0 0.17 plus minus 0 0.2 Pascal second and compaction temperature corresponding to 0 0.35 plus minus 0 0.3 Pascal second. So that is the steady state flow procedure. And again, I would say that you can watch my video on mixing and compaction temperature for further details on these two methods where I have explained it in detail. IRC SP-139-2023 suggests mixing temperature, laying temperature and compaction temperature as given in this table. But this is the range given for different types of binders. Actual temperature should be estimated using the procedure as given in MS2. And also MS2 suggests that the mixing temperature even for modified binder should not exceed 177 degrees centigrade. As far as structural design of pavement is concerned, it is to be done exactly as given in IRC 37 guidelines. Now the only difference here is that if you remember for 90% liability, the equation, fatigue equation given in IRC 37 is this equation. C into 10 power minus 4, 1 upon epsilon t. This is the tensile strain, allowable tensile strain at the bottom of bitmus layer. And that is the MR value of the bitmus layer. Now, this equation is modified slightly because here now we are using high performance mix. And therefore, this fatigue life is increased by a factor of 1.4. Remaining parameters are same. So here, C is 10 to the power m and m is given by this equation where this VA is the percent volume air wires that is 3%, VB is percent volume effective binder in the mix 
and epsilon t here is the maximum horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of the bottom witness layer. And the value of MR, as I told you, it is taken 4000 MPa for unmodified binder and 3500 for modified binder. Remaining procedure is same. Rating equation is to be taken same as given in IRC 37. If you have any doubt on the procedure, then you can watch my video on design of flexible payments based on IRC 37 2018. And there is no other change except this fatigue equation. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestions in the comment box.